Now let's turn to politics. After one of the closest and most interesting congressional races in quite some time, we got a chance to sit down recently with Marie Glusenkamp Perez, the projected winner of Washington's third district. It took five days for the winner to be projected in the race. Democrat Glusenkamp Perez is in, Republican Joe Kent out. Glusenkamp Perez flew out to DC for orientation just hours after she was projected to win. Well, we wanted to know what new member orientation is like for Congress. You know, the people who help create the federal laws for the rest of us. Evan Watson has this story. We know it can take days for decisive election results in close races. For candidates who are waiting on that call, they might only have a few hours before they're on a plane to D.C. for new congressional member orientation. I mean, it's very surreal. And I would say, like, I haven't been to Washington, D.C. since ninth grade. And so going and um, really just the stark contrast between our district and our values in southwest Washington and, and comparing it to the world of D.C., you know, um, it really, really makes me value and feel much more protective over our interest in southwest Washington. What contrast is that between here and D.C.? They don't have any trees there. <laughs> <laughs> Democrat um, Marie yeah. Glusenkamp Perez says yeah. it's a whirlwind transition for someone new to Congress. A lot of um, budgeting, a lot of logistics, a lot of security. She spent last week in D.C. figuring out staffing and her office infrastructure. She also took classes on House ethics rules and learned how various committees work in between frequent phone calls. Now she's back for Thanksgiving and then she'll return to D.C. next week for round two. What were your expectations going into that first week and then what ended up happening? I have to say, I did expect a little bit more integration uh, between the uh, Republican and Democratic side, but it, there are classes that we are separate. We have we, we have separate events. Um, I think that's not ideal. You know, I think it's critical that we make allies across the aisle early, figure out um, you know who shares similar values to me. So I am making more of an effort to to talk to other Republican electeds. In her campaign. Glusenkamp Perez marketed herself as a moderate candidate who wants to find the political middle ground. Across the country, more moderate candidates from both the Republican and Democratic parties performed well in the November midterms. Glusenkamp Perez and political analysts say they view the results as a mandate from voters to find consensus. My hope is that um, I'm, I'm part of sort of a new generation of, of people in D.C. who really are looking for bipartisanship, who really are looking to make friends with people of all political persuasions and, and delivering on the things that, you know, there's just so much stuff that we all agree is broken, you know, and, and so my hope is that we can right now at the start before some of these like political affiliations get cemented in, make relationships that we can lean on to get bills passed. Do you feel like there's a sense of that in this freshman class of 43? I think so, it, you know, it's, it's, it is so, tightly scheduled it's hard to to find those times like to have short conversations during breaks but what i'm seeing you know i've, I've talked to plenty of republicans who um, are excited about the issues i'm excited about she mentions right to repair laws as an example you should be able to fix your car or your phone but first she and the other new members of congress have to get ready to govern you know what committees have availability what is the schedule going to look like how is your life going to come together? You know, there's a lot of those, a lot of those questions for all of us. And where's my role in all of this? Right. What rooms need my perspective more than others? You know, how can I um, find a strategic advantage for my district and the needs of my district? Navigating all of this. Yeah. That was Evan Watson reporting. And by the way, we should tell you votes are still being counted in this race between Glusenkamp Perez and Republican Joe Kent. Right now, she leads Kent by about 2,800 uh, 2, votes. Plus, some voters still have time to fix any ballot mistakes. If her lead shrinks, and by the way, it, it's crazy that we're still counting. That's why she's still just the projected winner, not the official winner. If her lead shrinks to within half a percentage point or about 1,600 votes, that would trigger an automatic recount in Washington. But there are very few votes left to count at this stage. And it's worth noting that recounts rarely change any election results. County election officials use audits as the process moves along to make sure the results are 100% accurate. And organizations like the Associated Press have projected Glusenkamp Perez to win the district. And we now, uh, that's, by the way, it should be done in more than a week from now. All right struggled to get that out. Let's take a look at a viewer comment that's come in during our show so far about our shoplifting piece. 
Rob says, the Multco DA has made a mockery of the criminal justice system. He's one of the biggest reasons that crime is out of control. Enforcing livability crimes is absolutely essential to reducing all crime in our community. As a law enforcement veteran of 30 years, it is a slap in the face for him to say he doesn't have simple evidence needed. I know for a fact that officers are collecting and submitting proper evidence. Thanks for your comment, Rob, and for your input, and for all of you who are sending emails. We appreciate that.